Howdy ho, team people. <laughs> I don't know. We're just improv in here. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Every time it's different. It's we funny. Know, no, we have There's a... no set. <laughs> we have a script writer. We do have a script writer who writes all of this. Yeah. Yep, you're right. That yeah. was my bad. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. So if, if this is not all received, blame... Dave. Our script writer. Yeah, Dave. Dave. Yeah. Jeez. Dave and Suzanne, they're our script writing team. <laughs> yeah. Those two. Those wily. Yeah. Wily. F- Episode 366. Uh, we are fast forwarding a week later, yet somehow miraculously still wearing the same clothing. Um, what, sir, might we be drinking today? Uh, we are drinking a Heisha, some Luan. Uh, this was sent, actually, I think maybe last year, maybe before that. Interesting. Uh, from uh, a guy in Australia named Toby. So thank you, Toby. Um, this one sells, or at least sold, at Chao Wang Shop at a time. And it is a first grade Luan. Uh, so just kind of a very specific okay. type of Hei Cha. It's known to have a lot of tips. So I think you can sort of see a lot of small leaves yeah. in this. I believe it comes in baskets. Um, so yeah, from 2016, uh, curious to try it. Yeah, it smells like a really, really interesting roasted aroma. Um, It'd be really interesting to smell those and taste those flavors. Very just reminiscent of um, just a roasted oolong from the nose, but that's the dry leaf, so we'll see how it tastes. Yeah, no, I'd say uh, roasted oolong is probably uh, spot on, actually. Mm. Definitely sort really of a nice raisiny roasted aroma to it. Um, and I do know that this is one of those types of hay cha that. People do age for a very long time. I don't know if this hits that specific subcategory of, mm. of the type of luon that should be aged for a very long time, but uh, uh, yeah. Interesting. So kind of similar to pour in that aspect. I wonder than being like sort of more of a ripe pour type thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh, sure. I wonder why, because there doesn't, I don't get a lot of, off the nose, we'll taste it, but off the nose I don't get a lot of abrasive, right. aggressive smell. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the goal and intention behind aging along one maybe right. this is just one of the sweeter more intended to be drank quickly once it could be yeah it's still processed in that same style yeah although i will say it, it it's definitely as you said closest to oolong it's not really I, i'm not getting a lot of ripe pour post fermenting no. and notes off the side no. there so yeah we'll see how yeah, it let's see how it is. yeah cheers cheers Wow. Different than what I ex- <laughs> expected. D- different was also the, the first episode. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it's uh, Ra- surprisingly raisiny. Yeah. Surprisingly ripe. Oolongy, ripe, puery, raisiny. Yeah, kind of plummy. Pretty heavy wood overtone. Oh, yeah, too, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it has an interesting version of, like, the roast, because it has that woody, ripe, puer Right. Thing. But it doesn't really have that like sweetness you get from like oolong, no, or even much a ripe more rock sweetness. taste almost. Yeah. Frankly, kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah, rock taste, interesting. Just sort of that like pine resin. Mm-hmm. Which I suppose would also Not be floral, what you would describe poor. Yeah, much more kind tr- of like terpene resiny. Kind of like a roasted poor. Yeah, totally. Re- yeah, 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 yeah. But that, yeah, interesting. I'm feeling surprised. Um, coming right out of the gate with some decent flavor, kind of a contrast yeah, to that, that yeah. white tea. I'm gonna say this is gonna be. If anything, the next teething is going to be strong. Yes, we shall see. Yeah. Mm. Great um, charcoal residual earthy rock flavor. Right. I think. Um, one difference strong. I believe this has from Pu'er is that uh-huh. uh, Pu'er uses generally, not all the time, uses the large leaf varietal. Sure. Sort of like um, the Samaka one um, that they'll use for Indian tea. I believe this uses the uh, smaller leaf that's more common amongst Oolongs and stuff uh-huh. like that. Interesting. So. Huh. Yeah. I wonder if that's why, in part, we're getting some of those plummy flavors a little bit. Anyway. Could be, yeah. Really interesting and... Uh, category bender yeah exactly like i don't know how to place it or what to really call it yeah got a lot a lot going on um and you know oftentimes when you're brewing one one signal you can do to sort of see if it's too weak or too strong is to sort of just judge off the color 
uh, frankly, I don't know what color this should be. So, yeah. So uh, yeah. I don't know if <laughs> from the color if it's uh, too weak or too strong. It looks less strong than it tastes. Tastes stronger than it looks. Yeah, it does. It kind. I kind of. Yeah, I agree. Uh, really good. Different. Some some sort of like light tartness to this. Yeah. Too. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like a cherry tartness and. Uh, yeah. Tasty, but complicated. Yeah. I would not pass the mom test. Yeah. I don't think. What about the ultralight backpacking test? No. No? No. Just Why not? Just because you have to steep it for so little amount of time. Okay. You gotcha, would get gotcha. obliterated. This is way too powerful. Profile-wise, would it pass the ultralight back? Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's so... Um, I don't know what I would like want to drink. This is so just different for me. I feel like this actually kind of fits the mood of of camping and ultralight mm. backpacking. But well, I don't know. I'm not the ultralight backpacker here, so I don't know if I can make it's not that really a right or wrong with it. It's just kind of what tastes good out there. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, this has a juiciness to it that I think could be really appealing. Um, a lot of uh, just physical tannin and kind of stuff going on um and you can't say that it would be like particularly good to do grandpa style i think that might just be right tough yeah no i think the challenge of this tea bringing it on a context like that would be brilliant i mean especially considering i don't even know if i'm brewing it right mm. um it's almost a vanilla-iness to this a little bit and really interesting i would i don't have any sense of how this is processed and how it's different from like a red pu'er versus an oolong. Mm-hmm. But it has vegetal oolongy notes that have been roasted out with charcoal. It yeah. has that charcoal thing going on. It has almost a sense of fermentation. It doesn't taste like young shung pu- raw pu'er either. Not at all. It doesn't have that same bite. It has a it, the bite for me is much more of a roasted tanniny oolong. Yeah. In that category with like hints and, and complexities of right tour. Right. Really good. Really different. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna do just one last one. I'm gonna let this hang out for just a little longer. Okay. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I, I I I honestly am Ooh. just very unsure how to feel about this tea. I don't even know how strong it is, frankly. I think you're brewing it pretty strong. Okay. Well then let's not go too long. But we'll we'll, we'll, well no, I mean it's not it's not that it's so it's I mean, it's good. It's not too strong. It's not bitter. It's just potent. It's powerful. You know, it's flavor- very flavorful, very powerful. Definitely an attention-demanding tea. Um, look at the color on that. That looks pretty... I, again, like, we don't know what the reference of dark should be. But yeah. That looks dark to me. <laughs> Whatever it is. It's like it if, you, syrupy. if you got this color for, like, a young raw pour, you'd know you overdid it. Yes. If you got this for a ripe pour, you know you way underdid it, too. Right, so right, we're right. kind of, like, splitting the difference right, on right. this. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, it's well. got an auburn orange color to it, almost something at red. Small leaves, like you said, James, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Okay. I'm going to drink this. All the way down. You know... Yeah, it ha- it's definitely like, it definitely feels to me like it's in that 80% oolong category now with other stuff happening. And and if I had to guess, blind, I think I would probably call this a oolong. Yeah, it's like distinctly not sweet compared to those teas. Interestingly, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And there's a lot of juiciness to it right. that um, some of those teas don't have. Yeah, it's so. almost like a more rugged version of those. There's a lot of like, I don't know. But it's not too bitter. It's just powerful, strong. No. This, this is a tea drinker's tea, in my opinion, for sure. Yeah. One to seek out um, if you are if you want to seek out like something new and different and see how it is. How do people get this? Is that... Uh, Cha Wang Shop. Oh, okay. I, and, and frankly, I mean, non-poor Hei Cha's tend to be quite inexpensive too. So Relatively. I don't know what the price is, but my guess is it's quite reasonable, uh, all things considered. Here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Hmm, not bad. Um, no. So like sour fruits, like Denny's description of sour cherries, getting like a sort of sour mix of minerals and fruits, I'd say. 
Um, yeah. Really good. It has a little young greenness to it that I can taste. I can see why people would age this to lessen some of that intensity. Definitely is, feels like a uplifting, energizing tea. Um, seasonality wise, this feels kind of like in the season for me. Yeah. Um, tasty, different, interesting. Check out Chow One Shop to grab this. I think you should, I think everyone, especially if you're kind of like into tea, so this is a cool, right. cool thing to try. You feel like you've tried everything? Try this tea. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. Yeah, we don't, usually when I, when we have something on the show at this point now and we're both like, huh, usually it's because it's like freaking weird. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this is more accessible than than that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, this is more just one that takes the existing <laughs> categories that we know and just like twists them in kind of an interesting fashion. Yeah, yeah. definitely good. Check it out. Um, if you guys like the episode, there's lots more tea that's just kind of more like typical, uh, with plenty of crazy yeah, weird we old stuff. Lots and, of normie tea <laughs> <laughs> stuff mixed in. So um, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want uh, down below. Hit the notification bell icon to do all the yeah. things and do all the things in the whole, whole. I will say for the non-normie tea drinkers, we do have a very interesting ripe pour coming for next episode, so check that out. Stay tuned. Then he doesn't know what's gonna hit him. I don't know what's gonna hit me. Until next time. <laughs> 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 Alright. Wait, why am I not <laughs> <laughs> <Cheers> later. <laughs>